What I'd like to see uh, really expand is uh, 3D printing and I just imagine the day when uh, 3D printing will be bigger than the Industrial Revolution and it'll all be bespoke and customised and all sorts of things, <laughs> whatever you like. Um, from, you know, parts, you know, your microwave's broken and all it needs is just a little part and you can just, you know, go on the website and print the part yourself or, I know, your own ornaments or your own furniture, your own kitchen countertops or whatever, whatever need be, really. And in the next five to ten years, I really want to say uh, Robert can help me clean the house, cook the dishes, and uh, because to me, wife, you know, we, we want to focus on the career, not only the housewives. I think that wearable tech is going to be the number one area, uh, followed by 3D printing. Uh, I think 3D printing because uh, it has massive backing from humongous companies and the public has shown an immense interest in it. Yeah, I would like to see that IEEE and the engineering societies and all this technology be used to focus on individuals and to help individuals with their individual problems. And uh, you know, it's it, looking at, at humankind's problems, not just making a buck. Being in the medical field, what I would really like to see in the future is I love the connectivity, uh, medical information back and forth, but there's got to be a better way in the future to secure that information. And I like to uh, see in the future a hyperloop, so cut my commute a lot. Uh, my dreams for the future for technology would be a smart fridge where I can, from the outside of the fridge, I can see what's in the fridge, how much it is, how old it is, how nutritious it is, and possibly keep my grocery list um, on the, the fridge and it would be smart enough to know what I needed to buy staples, things I use all the time. A lot of the emerging countries like India and other places don't have the infrastructure and a lot of the infra technology we show here can get over the basic infrastructure problem and help the life of the people in a day-to-day -day life. You know, it's kind of personal health, education, quality of life, all the uh, you know benefits you see here, we can also apply remotely to a lot of uh, you know emerging countries. I would see that in the next 15, 20 years. I saw a presentation yesterday on driverless cars and just thinking about what that can do for our environment, for our quality of life, for opening up, um, maintaining independence for senior adults who don't have the capacity to drive on their own, I think has tremendous possibility. And it's one of the exciting things that I look forward to in the future. And uh, with all this technology, um, I'm hoping to see the application of dynamic reasoning engines as it applies to human health and automated monitoring of human health. So, for example, you can, given your lifestyle, given what you're doing, um, you can forecast and predict how long you're going to live, how healthy you're going to be at certain ages. Um, I like to see people given that information so they can adjust their lifestyles and ultimately live longer and happier lives. And I think the future is going to have a lot of robots like that one. I think it's going to be personal uh, robots. I think they're going to have applications in the home. I think you're going to have applications with old folks, I think you're going to have applications with uh, uh, industrial type applications where you have repetitive tasks, the robots are going to do it and they don't care and they can work 24-7, that's the solution.